This is Aaron Harris. Welcome to episode three. AAU basketball or travel team basketball do I think it's it's a difference actually. You know, AAU basketball is more uh, I guess you can say more um, as as not as intense as you know travel team. Travel team is is more of a business because there's money invested and things like that from the shoe companies or corporate people. I think AAU basketball is more youth sports played where you know it's more it's more driven by parents and and mentors and things of that nature. Um, but the, the growth in it is has really been, as you can see, is so much money in basketball now. And kids at an early age are introduced to the business of basketball. So everything that you do is really a business decision from the 13-year-olds all the way up to, you know, 17 or 18-year-olds. So for a travel team coach that has a Nike Adidas Under Armour or whatever type of shoe deal, you know, they're asked to put a certain type of product on the court. So, you know, in doing that, they have to make business decisions in order to put the best product on the court and also to, you know, to become consistent having, a, you know, having a contract and things like that. And I think that's where it's all with, with deferred. You know, when I was coming up, there was no shoe companies involved in, in, the, in the program. You know, you just played the game because you loved it and you were passionate about it. And if you played in the NBA or you played in Europe, you made some money, but it was nowhere near to the magnitude it is. That's where I think, as you can see, where the growth is going. You know, we can, if you can easily put people in a box and point at one thing, but I think the biggest thing is just the amount of money that's being made in this business. You know, and that's, that's where the biggest difference is. Get back. Everybody gave the order for food on right? Yeah. When everybody get back, nice, they're gonna bring the food to your room. I want you off the shower, get off your feet, don't get your stinky asses in the bed without taking a shower. Elevate your legs. Alright, and relax. Let's go. Get in. Good job, fellas. Take one on three. Hey, 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 remember, we're the best team here. Yep. I'm gonna show motherfuckers every time we don't come on court. Exactly. We're the best fucking team. Alright, take one on three, family on six. One, two, three, take four, five, six. Hey. Hey. Coach's style is unique. I mean, I think you have to be, you have to be cut from a different cloth to play for me because there's, there's only going to be one way and that's going to be my way. And there's really no give. And, you know, the reason I always coach your eighth grade is because I want to kind of prepare kids for high school. Then I coach your 17 you to prepare you for college because I want you to be able to accept whatever coach is throwing, throwing at you and, and you're not going to a shell because he's coaching you too hard. You want to be able to adapt, you know, and be productive. And you got to hear me but you can't allow it to break you down or 
you know, take you out or make you lose focus as the as the game is going on. Gang rebound. That's what that's that. That's the only way. That's the only way. Roach, when the ball comes out of bounds, I don't want you driving basketball up the court. Use your speed. Make them stop you and then break it out. And then we go 41 high. We're gonna move them, we're gonna pass, and we're gonna cut. We're gonna chop it to the lead. Now, every time the other shot go up, one out, and the only people, the only people getting back is one and two. Y'all be going straight to the glass. On their end, I want five to the board. Let's go. Hey, when no, you get into the post, they know it now. Look for the cut. Defense on three. Watch it through. Defense. I think the biggest thing that uh, Keith uh, brings to the table is his uh, being authentic. Uh, whether it's on the sideline, whether it's here in the office, you always know where you stand with him. You always get, he always provides you with the best Keith Stevens that he can give you, uh, that he can give you. Um, one of the thing, biggest things that I have learned from him is you just gotta tell people what it is when, it, when it's right for them. Um, not everybody, um, it appreciates um, being told. They, everybody wants to be told the truth, but not everybody appreciates what the truth sounds like when they hear it. And I think Keith's one of the best people that I've been around with telling people exactly what it is when it is. Uh, playing for Coach Keith, it's, it's fun at times. Uh, he could be very hectic, um, make you think about uh, while you're playing basketball sometimes. Um, he gets on you, uh, but, it's, but it's for the better. He, he makes us compete. Um, he, he, he gets after us, but uh, we all know, we all know um, why he's doing this for us. Uh, we enjoy it. Uh, it's either, if you don't do it his way, you're not playing. So, I mean, you, you got to do whatever he says, like defense, offense, you got to do it his way or it's no way. I definitely describe him as carrying on and off the court, but when he's on the court time, it's straight business. Like, we, we always joke off the court. I always joke with him off the court, but when we're on the court, it's straight business, straight, uh, no smiling, and none of it. it's straight getting to the money. Like, that's what it is, you gotta win. You gotta ever do to win, that's what it takes. To be my ultimate goal as a coach is to make sure I get the most out of each kid, you know, be it on the court and off the court. And make sure you can help them be as successful as possible with whatever endeavors they choose to go to when they finish playing basketball or while they're playing basketball. So that, with that being the mindset, I have to be consistent in my effort and, and my speaking as I'm talking to these guys. Um, with my dad's coaching style, I guess you can use two words, and I would use uh, passion and love. Um, the reason why I say that because I feel like it's not just for the basketball piece, it's more so for the kids as well. Like, he treated me the same as he treated every kid that came through this program, and coached us all the same. Um, he puts in all his efforts, all his time, all his energy into this program and for these kids' best interests. I think he has the same goals for all of us and he just wants us all at the end of the day to be as successful as possible and actually max out in any way as possible in life with all our goals and all our dreams. Um, and with him, he does whatever it takes to help each and every one of us, including myself, to reach these goals. Uh, he never gives up, he never quits on an individual uh, that comes through his program. He even helps individuals outside of the program. So that's just the type of guy he's always been. 
overall good weekend. You know, we, we accomplished what we came to. This week in practice, I need everybody to be coming in with a different mindset. You know, we have to, in order for us to get better, we gotta make each other better. We have to push each other in practice. Like we gotta make another step. Like in order for everybody, the other guys to get more minutes, I need those guys to get in the minutes to push each other, make each other better. So we got we have to do that because what's happening is when we making sub rotations, some people are mentally not there when they go in. So what happened with the intent the intensity and the consistency is falling down. In order to be really, really good, that can't happen. Like we have to be, if anything, we've got to be here, but we gotta be here. We don't never want to be here. Let's get better this week, man. We did a good job. We won. We had some tough games. You know, I still think we're the best team here, but I also think we got a lot to work with. Let's get better this week and make sure everybody take practice serious. Two, three, two, four, five, six. I mean, the big, I think the biggest thing you take away from it is using basketball as a vehicle to earn a college degree. You know, and if anything else after that is a plus. You know, so you gotta you gotta keep your eyes on the prize, which is, hey, I want to put the kid in a position to earn a scholarship. And as a kid, you gotta put yourself in a position to to garner that scholarship, those scholarship offers with the hopes of being able to get the school that you're, of your dream or of your choice to be able to go and complete your education. I think it's one of the most productive years that Team Takeover has. You know, just traveling, being with my teammates, uh, most of the week, well, most of during April, we was all together. I think I just love that experience, that brotherhood that we created. Because while we playing, getting closer in these close games, I think we all become closer. So just like uh, being together a lot is, makes it a great experience. Um, it's a great experience. I mean, a lot of people want to be where we are right now, so we really got to work to show that we're supposed to be here. Uh, it's not just for anybody. It's very competitive. Um, it's a fun organization. It's somewhere uh, we want to be. Um, again, it's not it's not quite like college, but um, it's, it's the closest we're going to get. Uh, uh, playing uh, that many games, that many games a week, it's, it could be a bit hectic. But um, this is the, the best help we're going to get uh, into that next level. definitely feels like Division I basketball. Just the intensity rises because every game you can't just come out slacking, like play with heart, play with passion. Even if it's not on offense, it could be on defense, defending. And Keith always stresses that, uh, especially with team takeover, playing defense. So that's where I really get that passion from. Defense and then it comes right to me on offense when I play defense. With turns, I mean, I think the thing with T is that you know, he's always ready to play. You know, he comes in the game, he's accepted a role of being our sixth man. You know, he comes in and he brings energy on both ends of the court, being one of the best rebounders for a size and then a great three-point shooter. And never once have he wavered or questioned what we asked him to do. He comes in and he gets the job done. And that just makes him a, you know, a quality leader by just by example. When you watch T play, I mean, the first thing you notice is that he's a, he's a kid that has a great feel for the game. He's not the most athletic, but he knows angles, he knows positioning, and then he's a great shooter. I think that's what makes it what separates him from a lot of guys that that aren't athletic, where he knows how to make you know make an impact, you know, some way somehow. Since Terrence has been in the program, I think sixth, seventh grade, his teams have always been elite, elite age, Final Fours. Um, at, at one time, I think sixth, seventh, eighth grade, T may have been you know, top player in the country um, at that age group. Uh, when he played uh, tenth grade for me last year, you know, he, we, we lost one game, and he was you know the, one of the main cogs of that. So Terrence has always been one of those kids that performed no matter what the situation has been.
guys, there's not one person over here that won't have an opportunity to play professional basketball at some level. But part of being able to do that is learning how to prepare, how to carry yourself, and how to be prepared as a professional. We're gonna win basketball games because we're just so talented. You know, and you guys are so coachable. We're gonna win. We're not gonna dispute that. But we're gonna lose basketball games because of our preparation and our mentality is not where it needs to be. Second, so you're doing a hell of a job. Great job, man. Great job. Thank you. Take me on three, fail me on six. One, two, three, Bam. four, five, six. Bam. I think a lot of our success goes to the maturity of Ann Harris being, though he's a returning guy that played on the 17U team last year. So he kind of knows what the expectations are, what the expectations are, I'm sorry. And even when you think about it, you're talking about a kid that's been in that environment, with hundreds of coaches watching, you know, being in practices when, you know, you know, certain things aren't accepted and there's a, a certain level of competitiveness that's, that's being demanded. So for him, he can kind of lead the way for a lot of these kids that really haven't experienced it yet. I think the biggest uh, growth for Ant has been uh, just confidence. He's always been in the mix with uh, all the best players in the country and all the best players in the area. Now I think him having some success with that has given him the confidence to go out and play um, his best basketball. I think he's a vocal leader. He gets everybody energized. Uh, like whenever we're down, he gets, picks everybody up. Uh, all of a sudden, he can score the ball very fast. Um, defense, he guards the best guards. Best player, wing, old guard. So that versatility he brings to the table. Um, the biggest growth of AAU basketball to me has been the investment that the parents have put into it. Um, parents are now looking for quality programs and getting quality training. Um, so that's one of the growths. I think social media has uh, played a large impact in it in documentaries such, such as the one that we're doing. Um, the highlights that come out every other day of different kids. Um, I think that has made the, uh, the growth of ba uh, AAU basketball explode the way it has. To get ready for Peach Jam, we got to come back in the gym ready to go. Uh, we got to come ready to finish the mission, uh, to win Peach Jam, and that's the goal that we've had ever since we started practicing at uh, Cesar Chavez in uh, March. And I think if we come back ready in the gym, focused, dialed in, we can definitely win Peach Jam. You know, going into Peach Jam, I think I have to do a better job of keeping the kids focused. You know, I got to do a better job of um, managing their expectations of you know, one to win a championship and realizing that, you know, that you can't look ahead to games that's not there yet. And you can't put yourselves in position like last year where we, we started a lot of games late and then we had to fight our way back into it. So I think I have to do a better job of preparing these guys when they walk on the court that when the whistle is blown, every second and every minute means something. You know, we can't take anything for granted. You know, nobody's going to lay down because of what our record was. You know, they're going to play us because of the consistency and the the history of this program and we gotta we have to represent the name on our jersey and play for each other in order for us to do that. When I think about the culture of DC, I just think about like unity. Like for instance, uh, music wise in DC, uh, we all come together and support local artists like Cuter Fools, Light Show, Shot Glizzy, like we all chime in. 
Young man, that jump crank too. Like young man, like we all support like each other down here in the DC. Like for like, we got our own music, Go Go. So, you know, we just listen to that a lot, you know, do our dances a lot. So everything down here is just a family. We all try to support each other so we all can make it because everybody trying to make it. Uh, basketball wise, I, mean, I feel like uh, this is one of the best areas to play basketball in. I uh, got the WCAC, um, uh, PBI, Mathis and Dagger. Uh, all those teams uh, pretty much go at it every year. I mean, so um, pretty much lit, lit in those terms. Yeah, you already know you be eating seafood right now. You already you got the shrimp. You got the shrimp. You got the crab. What else down here, bro? What else uh, we, we got? We got. Um, oh, we got uh, carry out. Yeah, the carry out. You know, who we? What you get from carry out, bro? Do it all. You do it all. I, I keep my simple five wing mumbo sauce, extra mumbo, extra mumbo sauce, you know, down here in DC, but we get down here mumbo sauce. This ain't Harris. This is Terrence Williams. Thanks for tuning in to episode three.